aren't TV remotes these days ridiculously overcomplicated? I think there are four or possibly five TV remotes in our living room and one television. It is complicated. My mum's TV had loads of tiny buttons on its remote control and the poor woman didn't want to do a multitude of things. She wanted to watch BBC One and the UTV News and of course Channel 4 for countdown every day. It wasn't that tricky but the remote was impossible. It's the same with phones. If it wasn't for an expert in the family we would all be just a little lost. It used to be you'd lift the phone and ring 57654 and I was directly home as a child. And now it's an 11 figure number to ring next door. That's one of the things I like about the parables of Jesus as we hear them in the Bible. They work at a very simple level that anyone and everyone can virtually understand and apply. There's no need for a commentary, a manual or a phone-in help number. They are self-explanatory. And yet they can go deeper too because the application, although it's simple on the surface, can be more demanding of our hearts and spirits. Let's hear the reading for today. This reading is from Mark chapter 4. Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered round him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it out on the lake, while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. He taught them many things by parables, and in his teaching said, Listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up grew and produced a crop, some multiplying thirty, some sixty, some a hundred times. Then Jesus said, Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. When he was alone, the twelve and the others around him asked him about the parables. He told them, The secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to those on the outside Everything is said in parables, so that they may be ever seeing, but never perceiving, and ever hearing, but never understanding. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven. Then Jesus said to them, Don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? The farmer sows the word. Some people are like seed along the path, where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Others, like seed sown on rocky places, hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Still others, like seed sown among thorns, hear the word, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Others, like seed sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop, some thirty, some sixty, some a hundred times what was sown. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The parable of the farmer sowing his seed. In a sentence, it seems to mean that the best seed scattered by the best farmer still draws a blank in parts of the field. And God's word 
adequately or well sown in people's lives is not guaranteed any positive, long-lasting result. But to get any fruit, we have to sow, even if much of the sowing is wasted. To get any disciples, even Jesus had to heal and teach a lot of people. And that's enough of a message on its own. But Jesus explains the parable to his disciples, and we, who are also his disciples, can go deeper with them too. We see Jesus describe the specific characteristics of different types of people. Those who are inattentive. Those who are easily distracted. The ones who are so caught up with worry and so dissatisfied with their lot. Those who are easily tempted. Each of them end up without any deeply rooted life-changing seed within them. It may have begun, but it didn't complete its work. And each of us, at times, drift into being those types of people. It can be to do with mood swings or with changes in our health, financial worries and fresh temptations can quash the fruitfulness of God within. As you and I look inside ourselves, as we should all do from time to time, we can probably identify the moment when our fruitfulness is curtailed, what circumstance, what issues, what problems create a barrier to God's work within us. And if we analyze those, perhaps it's possible to find a way to avoid or delay or prevent them. It's worth throwing some light on our experience with the benefit of those most marvellous words from Habakkuk with which I'll finish today's message. There the prophet declares his impenetrable conviction that God will still be his God despite the failings in every aspect of his life. Can we not ask God to use our trials to turn over the rocky soil and the weed-ridden soil and convert us to good soil where his word will continue to grow. These are the words from Habakkuk chapter 3, beginning at verse 17. Lord, may these words speak to us in our disadvantage, our dilemmas today. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the sheepfold, and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my Saviour. The Sovereign Lord is my strength, he makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good day, and may this week for you be a week where you encounter the life-giving word of God sown in your heart and bearing fruit, which others will see and which will encourage them to come to meet the same farmer, the same Saviour, the same Lord, who seeks to bring life into all of our lives. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.